The phrase less is more gets thrown around a lot, and when it comes to video games, it's often used in relation to a game's art style, soundtrack, or story. But What the Golf is perhaps the best example I've seen of extending that saying to a game's mechanics, without settling for an experience that wears thin before the end or fails to deliver on value. What I mean by that is that What the Golf provides roughly six hours of gameplay off the back of just two inputs. You aim with the left stick, and you hit by holding the A button down to adjust the power. It's surprisingly simple, even for a golf game, and while the aiming and shooting feel intuitive enough, on their own these inputs would get kind of boring maybe five or six holes into the game. But it doesn't even take that long for What the Golf to start pulling surprises out of its hat. Before you start to tire of the simple putting gameplay, the game introduces holes that dodge out of the way of your shots and explosive obstacles before saying, you know what? Golf kinda sucks, as the game swaps your golf ball out for practically anything you can think of. Now, I won't spoil anything too far into the game, because much of what the golf's appeal is the genuine surprise that comes with each set of holes and their weird modifiers. However, the simple point and hit gameplay remains the same throughout, regardless of what form the ball takes and what wacky gimmicks each set of holes might feature. And what's more, none of these twists stick around for too long either. They're introduced, explored a little, and then they vanish before they ever have a chance to wear thin. And somehow, What the Golf manages to keep introducing new gimmicks with each new set of holes, which gives the game a decent amount of variety, while every deviation just continues using the exact same control scheme, no matter what the specific trick to a set of holes might be. The game simply works, exactly how you might expect, thankfully without forcing tutorials down your throat every time it introduces something new. For instance, your golf ball is a car now, you aim it as normal, but instead of dictating the distance of your hit, the A button now dictates the speed of your car. The level is side-scrolling now, then aiming now works on an X and Y axis, and the level's gravity works as you might expect. Throughout my playthrough, I was constantly caught off guard by not only how weird and interesting the game's holes could be, but also by just how versatile what the golf's core controls really were. The only time I found any of what the golf's various gimmicks particularly awkward or poorly implemented was when the game introduced first-person mechanics and started defaulting to the Nintendo Switch's handheld gyroscope controls to aim. Now, I prefer having the Switch docked, and it's 100% possible to play these levels without going handheld, but each time you reset the level, you're forced to change the settings to docked mode again. Playing these levels in handheld mode works fine, but I genuinely don't understand why they wouldn't just let you pick an option and stick with it. Having to constantly pause the game, and then disable and re-enable the option to play docked before I could take another crack at these levels was honestly the most frustrating part of my entire playthrough. But to what the golf's credit, these levels make up a tiny fraction of what the game has to offer, and even if you just stick to the main challenges and play to the credits, the game has about two and a half hours worth of content in store for you. None of it is particularly hard though, since all of the core levels let you take as many shots as you like, and the concept of par is relegated to the side challenges. But those side challenges are definitely worth checking out, mostly because they provide the game's main source of difficulty, featuring new goals for the standard levels such as beating them under par or clearing certain obstacles from them. They also double the game's already surprising runtime to around 5 or 6 hours depending on your skill. Not bad for a game built around two inputs. It's also worth noting that the time you spend with What the Golf is probably going to be super laid back thanks to its appealing style, both in terms of its visuals and its audio. The graphics are nothing to write home about, but the simple flat style fits What the Golf's straight-faced weirdness remarkably well. And likewise, its a cappella heavy soundtrack is suitably pleasant. The game is just a really chill time. The game's multiplayer offerings are admittedly a little less chill and a lot more chaotic, but they're also incredibly fun. What the Golf lets you face off against a friend in a variety of levels that riff off what you might find in the main game, and these competitions are basically a race to the hole, with the added chaos of players bouncing off one another. After a series of these randomized races, you're pitted against each other in a more arena-like setting, and you're forced to duke it out using the wins you've accrued as lives. It can be some really silly fun, and adds just a little more value to what I think is already a shockingly substantial package. And hell, I haven't even mentioned the daily challenges that mix and mash core levels together in a gauntlet with an added leaderboard for the truly competitive players out there. With all that said, What the Golf is excellent. Normally, I'm all about mechanical complexity, but the amount of variety that What the Golf achieves without really changing its versatile control scheme is hugely impressive. Even more so is the fact that it goes for three to six hours without really wearing thin. No single gimmick sticks around for too long, and What the Golf has plenty of tricks up its sleeve, which I hope you'll find for yourself. If you're looking for a silly, fun, laid-back game to spend an afternoon with, you could do a lot worse than What the Golf. What the Golf is available on PC, iOS, and Nintendo Switch.